Today we're going to go through a complete walkthrough of the CNC software setup and initial run of a Pro Series machine. I'll get started by using the website listed on the instruction card that came with the machine, cncrouterparts.com slash instructions. And I've already done the mechanical assembly and connected and mounted electronics in the previous video, so I'll select the CNC software setup link. The first step of the software install is to download and install Mach 3 on our CNC control computer. We recommend that you install Mach 3 using the link we provide here, as this always represents the latest stable Mach build that we recommend. With the correct version downloaded, I'll launch the installer wizard and we'll work our way through. I'll carefully review the license and liability agreement, more or less, and hit next. I recommend deselecting the parallel port driver, wizards, and the XMLs as we'll use our machine specific XML file available from our website. And I'll accept the next few forms as is until the installer starts deploying the program files to my local hard drive. Next I'll find my Mach 3 license file. This is typically delivered by email. I'll rename the license file from .xxx to .dat. I'll copy my license file and then navigate to the Mach 3 installation directory and paste it here. Now I can move on to step 2 where I'll download the Ethernet Motion Controller Mach 3 driver. This is a self-deploying file so I can simply double click on it to install it. Just to be sure, I'll go to my Mach 3 installation directory, Plugins, and verify that the Ethernet driver is here. Now I need to download the pre-configured machine XML file that corresponds to the machine I've built. If you've built a custom sized machine, you can start with the XML file for the machine nearest in that size. In my case, I'm looking for the XML for a Pro 4848 with NEMA 34 motors. There it is. And once again, I'll find the file that I've downloaded, copy it, and place it in my Mach 3 installation directory. Now I'll verify that I have the Ethernet cable connected between my plug-and-play controller and the CNC computer, and ensure that the plug-and-play controller is powered up. Next, I'm going to download the system configuration utility for the Ethernet controller, and this will configure the network and firewall settings. With it downloaded, I'll run the utility. You'll notice a bunch of command windows open and close. And that's normal. Now I can select Start Configuration, and I recommend using Easy Mode. Now I'll select which network interface the Plug and Play controller is connected to. Typically, you'll find at least two networks, a wireless and a wired network. I'll click on the wired network and select Configure Everything. We'll again see a bunch of command windows open and close. And finally I'll see the Ethernet controller information displayed in the lower table. This is how we know the utility has been successful. Now I'll close the program and go to the next step. This additional PC configuration step covers some of our best known practices and recommendations. These will ensure that the PC is well configured for its dedicated role driving the CNC machine. Starting with the network configuration. From the Network and Sharing Center, Adapter Settings, I'll right click and choose Properties on our Ethernet network that's connected to our plug and play controller. In there, I'll disable the unused clients and protocols, all but the IPv4 protocol, and select OK. Next, I'll go back into Adapter Settings. However, this time I'll click on the Configure button below the Physical Network Adapter. And in the Advanced tab, I'll look for Energy Management properties that I can disable. Like me, you may not have any. Then I'll finish by looking in the Power Management tab and uncheck the option that allows the operating system to power off the network adapter. And that's it for network configuration. Now I need to verify that my screensaver is off. These are not very common anymore, however it's good to check. Next I'll create a custom power management profile 
and this is a critical step, especially for notebook computers. There are multiple ways to get to the Power Options panel. The Power Management icon on the taskbar, the search box, or conveniently, directly from the screensaver panel I'm currently on. I'll select Create Power Plan, choose the High Performance Profile as my baseline, and name the profile to something I'll recognize. I prefer to keep my monitor on all the time and manually shut it off when the CNC is not in use. So I'll set these settings to never and select create. Now I'll go back to my newly created profile and choose advanced options and set the turn off hard drive to zero, which is programmer speak for never. We currently don't recommend any action for Windows Defender on Windows 10. Though if you're using an earlier version of the operating system, such as Windows 7, we do have some recommendations in these instructions. Moving on to Windows Updates, I'll search for that in the search box. Select Advanced Options and ensure that under Choose How Updates Are Installed, it's set to Notify to Schedule Updates. Next, I'll download the pre-configured Mach 3 startup link. This will start Mach 3 at the highest Windows user level priority, which can help with performance and reliability. With the Mach 3 shortcut downloaded, I'll drag it and move it to my desktop. Delete all the default Mach 3 shortcuts, and rename the downloaded shortcut so that instead of download, it ends in L and K. For link. Renaming the file is only necessary if your browser and security settings rename the file to .download. Otherwise, you can use the file as is. And finally, this and every time I run my Mach 3 controller, I'll disable my wireless network to ensure that Windows or any other user installed programs can't receive updates, as the processing of these updates can interrupt our CNC control stream, not something we want in the middle of a long running program. Now I'm ready to launch Mach 3, configure some of my optional extras, and verify things are moving correctly. With Mach 3 loaded, I'll need to clear the power up reset condition. First, I'll make sure I've unlocked all the installed physical e-stop switches, and then I'll press the reset button. I'll use the arrow keys to jog the machine around. While standing at the front of the machine and looking at it, the right arrow moves the spindle right, the left to the left, while the down key moves the spindle towards the front of the machine and the up arrow moves it away to the back. Page up and page down move the spindle up and down respectively. While I do this, I'm also looking to ensure that the digital readouts, DROs, in Mach 3 move in the correct direction. X and Y DROs should grow larger as they approach the positive limit switches. If your machine is not moving, one of the first things to check is that your motors are energized. Next, I'll check out my home and limit switches for correct operation using a metallic object such as a collet wrench to manually trigger the induction sensors and monitor the signals in the Mach 3 diagnostics panel. Most of the home switches are configured as limit switches as well, so we'll see two lights for those and just one for the dedicated switches. The Z home and limit sensor is an optional part of the proximity sensor kit. Since I have that here, I'll need to enable it in Mach 3. I'll do this by going to Config, ports and pins, input signals, and turn the red X next to Z home and Z++ into green check marks, enabling both home and limit for the Z axis. Config and save settings, thereby committing these changes to the machine profile. Now when I test the sensor, I see the expected indications. And finally, I'll verify my auto Z touch plate. Great. Before I home my machine for the first time, I'm going to verify that my sensors are exposed 3 quarters of an inch from the red plates. This is a good place to start from. Now I'm ready to test homing the machine. Homing will establish the machine coordinates and auto square the gantry. This way no matter what happens, power loss or e-stop, we can always rehome the machine and get to the place we were before. To do this, I'll hit the ref all home button. If you've installed a Z home sensor, that'll be the first axis to home followed by the Y enslaved axes and lastly the X axis. 
While everything is looking great, we'll still want to verify some test cuts that the Y enslaved axes are indeed square and adjust their home sensors as needed before putting this machine into production. This will be discussed further in the tramming and calibration video. If you're using a router, you can plug that and line power into the Relay 1 outlets on your plug and play controller. Then you're all set to test it. I'll be using our plug and play spindle connected to the SPTHC port, which is known as Output 3 in Mach 3. So I'll need to configure that as my spindle output port. I'll do that by going to Config, Ports and Pins, Spindle Setup, and update both M3 and M4 to use Output 3 instead of 1. While I'm here, I'll also update M7 to use Relay 1 and leave M8 using Relay 2. This way I can connect a dust collector or other accessories to both Relay 1 and Relay 2 and control them through my program or directly from the operator panel. With the spindle ready to power up, I'll press the spindle CW F5 button. I can set the spindle RPM by adjusting the spindle speed parameter to any value between 8000 and 24000 RPMs and press enter to activate the new speed setting. Your programs will automatically turn the spindle on and off by issuing M3 and M5 commands. And again press the spindle CWF5 button to manually turn off the spindle. Finally, I'll complete my initial setup and verification with my AutoZ touch plate. I'll start by removing my dust shoe lower frame so we can see the tool a bit better. I'll position the touch plate below the tool and connect the clip to the tool. I'll briefly press the page down button to get the tool within a couple inches of the plate. And I can press the auto tool zero button to show you what you'll see if you have not yet implemented the auto zero touch plate script. To download the script I'll need to re-enable my wireless connection. Then I'll go to the instructions and configuration section of our website, which you can get to via the main instructions page under auxiliary components or from the main navigation bar on the left. Now I'll find and select the AutoZ touch plate instructions. There's a lot to digest on this page, but since we have a plug and play controller and the pre-configured machine XML file, really all we need is the script itself. So I'll scroll down until I see the code window and select all the code and press Control C to copy it. Now I'll switch back to Mach 3 and go to Operator and Edit Button Script in the toolbar and click on the Auto Tool Zero button. Within this code box, I'll replace the not implemented message with the code I copied from the CNC router parts instructions page using Control P for paste. Exit and save the script. And once again disable my wireless connection. Now I can press the Auto Tool Zero button, keeping my hand near the e-stop in case the script doesn't work correctly and fails to stop. The touch plate is spring loaded to give us a good deal of reaction time to stop it if we need to. With the tool zeroed, I'll remove the clip and plate, and I'll use the MDI panel to manually issue a G0 rapid to bring the tool down to Z0 and confirm that the tool is just touching the workpiece. And then I'll raise the tool back to an inch and a half above the surface. This completes the software setup and initial run of our Pro Series machine. The machine is now ready for squareness verification, tramming procedure, and mounting the spoil board. Go to cncriderparts.com for more information on purchasing your own Pro Series machine, for sample files to help you set up your machine, or free projects to help you get started making things. Thanks for watching.